hello guys in the last tutorial we made this button over here as you can see here that I'm going to double as you can see we made this button and today we're going to make the script that changes this button to whatever we want so I'm going to make that script in the shop game object so I'm going to add component new script and we're going to name it shop handler which which handles all the shop stuff okay now we have this and today we're going to deal with a new thing called classes the guys at unity have a great tutorial about this I will link it in the description anyways I'll try to explain it what a class is to you a class basically is something like a, a variable that can hold multiple variables in it and can also execute functions basically when you type game object dot transform dot something over here for example find child this is a this is a function that is inside of the class transform that is inside of the class game object and there's a lot of stuff like this I'm sure that if you look at the tutorial of the unity guys you will understand this a bit more but it, it's not that hard really so anyways let's get started by making a public class so public class and we're going to name it item and here is where we'll hold all of the properties of an item in the shop so what are the properties of that item well they will first of all they will all be public so I'm going to put here public and a string for the name public string name a sprite for the image public sprite image uh, a float for the cost another float for the gain an integer for the count and one two three four five I think that's it okay and now I want to see this item in the inspector I want to see it here so that I can modify it and I don't want to see only one no, I want to see several of them. And how can I do that? Just make a public array. So if I put here public, and what is the array of? It's an array of item. Because as you can see, item is a new class or variable type that you that you want to use. So item. And to make it an array, just use the brackets like that. And just name the array something. So shop items and now if this item was anything as was any other thing like an int you'll see it here in the inspector but as you can see you don't see it why because this item is not an integer or a float or a string those simple data types and to show this in the inspector you all you have to do is put here system dot serializable Oh, okay and now it will show on the inspector let's so wait a bit okay and now it shows as you can see this is the shop items and let's say we want to have a shop with free items okay so we type that free and we have and now we have free items to, to make you know one can be this monkey that we already put here but we're going to put it again so it generates automatically so I'm going to copy the monkey image and put here its name monkey and the cost will be something like I don't know five and you'll gain two bananas per second with each monkey the count we're going to we're not going to change and by that because of that we could even put this not public but you know it's always nice to see it there the second element will be banana tree and I don't know if this this name will actually fit in there but it does not matter much if it doesn't fit and I have this banana tree that I copied from the web and also this factory and I'm going to drag them both into Unity's assets back to the shop I'm going to replace the banana sprite with this image and the cost can be 15 the gain 10 something like that you know it, let's not get to these tweaks right now just some value and here we're going to make the factory 
and it has the sprite of the factory the cost costs 20 and produces 15 and that's it we have now three items ready to put in this item shop and we want to somehow make these items be a button well all you have to do basically is the same that you do when I, when I press ctrl D over here which is instantiating a button as, a, as an element of the shop and that's all I have to do and for each element in this shop in this shop item array we want to create a button this button over here so we have to instantiate it basically and how can we instantiate something well first off we have to create a reference to it so public game object button okay and that's the button that we're going to instantiate and this this item or button that I have here I'm going to drag it into the assets okay so it's now a prefab I will later organize all of this stuff but for now it will stay like this okay so in the shop we made a reference to it so where is it there it is the button and I'm going to drag the button into here and now all we have to do is a for each loop which is a loop that iterates through all the elements of an array you can actually see the link in the description for the tutorials on loops and forage loops and what we want to do is in the start for the start of the shop handler we're going to make this button have those fields over there so first off let's make a forage loop so for each and it's the type is item because that array type is item and you can name it anything I'm going to rename it i in and the array that we're that we're going to iterate through is the shop items array so in shop items and now over here we're going to do something and like I said we're going to instantiate something so we can start just by doing that instantiate the button bam it, that's done but now when we instantiate the button it will instantiate this exact button and I want to change all of these fields to match these fields over here and to do that remember that in that button we had a script we had this script over here that basically connects all of these components to the script so we're going to find this script and change these components okay so that script is in the button so we're going to have to create a reference for this button so I'm going to click here to type here game object and name it bdn equals this as a game object okay I think that's it hello this is it what we're, what we're doing with this is forcing the wherever we're instantiating to be a game object because this instantiates as an object and we want it as a game object that's just it and we want to find that button script so to make it easier for us I'm going to create a reference to that to that script as well and that script was named item script so I'm going to create a reference for it as well so item script and script or something like scp I don't know equals button game object dot get component and we find, want to find a component item script okay, like so and with this we're making this scp thing be this component and we could not make this line but I'm going to explain to you why we did it in a second it's pretty straightforward so what we want to do is to make the scp which is the script dot for example the name the name I want to be to make the name equal to the to the name of that element so the we name the element i so i and we're going to find the string name dot name uh, but actually I made a mistake over here because this name over here as you remember is a text is a text component so if we go here into the text component okay this is the text component and we want to access the dot text parameter so 
all we have to do here is put here dot text okay something like that and the reason I put this line over here is because if I didn't put it, it will, I would have to type something like bdn dot get component item script something like this dot name because we want the name component dot text and I will oops dot text instead of just this scp dot name dot text and as you can see it's much simpler it actually makes the script fast because we don't have to access to use this function over here five times because we have here five elements to attribute so we have attributed the name now we're going to attribute the the cost since it's already here and it's a text so dot text equals and what does it equal well we want to name it cost two points plus uh, space and plus the i dot cost and I'm going to convert it to a string because it's always better to and sometimes it gives us errors next what's next scp dot count count dot text equals and this will be just the number of the count so i dot count as you can see over here count What's left? The gain dot gain dot text, and this is bananas per second space plus i dot gain, and we're going to also convert this to a string, like so. And because these these are floats, I'm going to make them only have one decimal case by typing here f1. I could put F2 for two decimal cases, three for three, and so on and so forth. Okay, and here one again. And the last thing that we need is the sprite. So SCP dot we named it icon, I think icon, and the icon is this image component over here, and we want to access the source image, meaning the sprite. So dot sprite. And we want it to be equal to the sprite that we saved in here, which is called image. So i dot image. And with this, we cycle through the all of the items in the shop, which were, which were free. And for each item, we are creating a button and setting the button to be what we want it to. And now that's it. There's an error. Oops, can convert to string, float to string. Oh, I actually made the count here float, but I want it to be an int. Let's see it save and let's see if it works. Let's just put here dot to string, like so, and now it will work. If I play and to show you that uh, nothing will happen right now because actually something will, but not do what we wanted. So as you can see, the, these three buttons that we instantiated through the code are now in here, but in here they don't show. They only show if they are in the canvas. If I put them in the canvas. There, there's a button over there. It's a bit weird, but it's over there. And actually, you don't even want it to be a child of the canvas. We, of course, want it to be a child of the shop. Because the shop is the layout group and the item is the layout element. So, for example, if I drag and drop really quickly into here, you'll see that it shows over there. Okay? And basically, we want to do this. Oops. And basically, we want this, this, to do this through the code so how can we do this through the code well just adding one simple line so what we want to do is to make the button which is the button that we just instantiated dot transform to be dot set parent and we want to set its parent and what is its parent it's the shop to access the shop you can actually make a a public reference to it so a public name object shop and just drag it over there but because this very script is in the shop all we have to do is put this dot transform because we don't want the game object itself we want the game object dot transform and this thing accesses it that's done now let's hit save and basically that's it we have our script done oh I'm going to delete this monkey over here because we don't want this 
we already made a prefab of it this is doing nothing and now every time I hit play you'll see that the shop will populate itself but right now it doesn't do anything and in the next tutorial we'll be taking care of that anyways thank you for watching and see you in the next tutorial